Kids today have no idea how good they have it. When they buy a new racing game like Gran Turismo or Forza, they expect dozens of expertly crafted courses or at the very least a fully realized open world that they can speed around in. But that wasn't always the case. If we go back to the early days of polygonal racers, you'll find that most of the games only had a handful of courses at best. Ridge Racer, for example, only came with three stages, all set in the same city, which turns out to be the exact same amount of courses found in both Virtual Racing and Daytona USA. I was reminded of these stingy titles while playing through the aggressively named new game Race Me Now, a throwback low-polygon racer that only gives us four tracks to speed on. That was enough to satisfy gamers back in 1995, but will that do it for race fans in 2022? I'm going to answer that question and a whole lot more in this review of Race Me Now. Don't let the title fool you, Race Me Now isn't as in your face as you might expect. This isn't the next burnout where the goal is to take down the competition by smashing them into buildings and walls. What we have here is a fairly straightforward low poly racer that is modeled after the early 32-bit speedsters. It's the kind of game that would have fit in perfectly with the early PlayStation and Saturn titles like Ridge Racer or Daytona USA. It's a small game that knows exactly what it wants to be and doesn't bite off more than it can chew. Race Me Now is split up between a bunch of single races and a season mode, which will enter you into a multi-race tournament in four different classes. Street cars, sports cars, muscle cars, and supercars. Beyond opening up the different classes, competing in the four-track season mode is also the only way to earn money, which you're going to use to purchase the 52 different cars in the game. The good news is that Race Me Now looks great and controls surprisingly well. In fact, of all the throwback racing games that I've played over the last few years, this is the easiest one to steer. No matter what kind of car you're racing, the cornering is tight and the vehicles have a good weight to them. And I say that as somebody that ended up having to use the keyboard since I couldn't get either my PlayStation or Xbox controllers to work properly. But even with the less than ideal keyboard, I was shocked by how well these cars handled. The low poly visuals also add to the appeal. While some of the cars are a bit on the simplistic side, the mountains, forests, rock formation, and bridges found on the sides of the track all look amazing. There's a smoothness to the races that is pleasing on the eyes and reminds me of that first time that I saw Ridge Racer in action. This is a great looking and playing game, there's just no doubt about it. The thing is, I'm bringing up all these positives now because well, the rest of this review is about to get negative. The thing that plagues the season mode is the same problem that makes the rest of the game incredibly hard to recommend. There just isn't enough content. No matter if you're in a street car or muscle car, you're forced to race the same four tracks in the exact same order. There's no variation whatsoever. They don't even mix things up by making you run the tracks backwards. Now you might be thinking that the four car classes act as different difficulty settings, speeding up the action as a way to keep the four repeating levels fresh. Well, think again, because there's not much of a difference in speed or difficulty between the street cars or the supercars. One might go a few miles per hour faster, but it's barely noticeable. This gives each of the class systems a very samey feel, which is even more annoying when you discover that there are no payoffs or extras to unlock. What you see is what you get. And speaking of difficulty, this is one of the easiest racing games that I've ever played. Even on the hardest difficulty, I had no problem taking a commanding lead early on which can sometimes give off the impression that you're the only one racing. In truth, there are 12 cars on the track, some of which you'll end up passing as you literally lap the competition. 
And again, this is on the hardest difficulty, using the keyboard. It just shouldn't be this easy to win a race. Part of the problem is that you don't lose a lot of speed or momentum when you take your car off-road. In fact, you'll quickly discover that you can drive right through the trees and rocks that line the course. That said, you don't actually want to drive through the trees. While it may look like you escaped a fatal car crash, what will happen is the game will randomly reset your position without warning. This means that you'll be driving for another 10 or 15 seconds only to get teleported against your will. It's jarring and frustrating. Honestly, I've never seen any other racing game handle a penalty like this, and I'm not sure I like it that much. It feels more like a glitch than a design decision. Also, for a game that commands that you race me now, I'm genuinely surprised by the complete lack of multiplayer options. You can't go online or even split the screen for local play. This is a single player game only. That's a shame because there are actually a lot of cars here that are going to go to waste and never be seen by the vast majority of players. With multiplayer support, the decision to include 52 different vehicles would certainly make a lot more sense. Look, this is a game that I want to love. The graphics are so good and the gameplay is some of the best that I've seen. But that's just not enough to get race me now over the finish line. With no multiplayer modes and only four tracks, this would have fit in perfectly back in the mid-1990s. However, as a racing game being sold in 2022, Race Me Now simply doesn't cut it. It just doesn't feel like a complete game. Race Me Now makes a great first impression thanks to its lovely low poly graphics and fantastic handling. Unfortunately, it won't take you long before you discover how shallow and limited this game really is. With only four courses, no multiplayer mode, and some dubious hit detection, this repetitive racer squanders all of its well-earned potential. As a debut release, Race Me Now proves that the first-time developer knows how to get the driving parts of the game right. Let's hope that they can improve on literally everything else in their next release. Race Me Now is a great playing game that I simply cannot recommend. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What is the most disappointing game that you've ever played? It doesn't have to be a bad game, just something that disappointed you. A game that fell well below expectations. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back later this week with more shoot 'em up reviews, as well as a look forward at diehard game fans best and worst. While you wait for that, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.